I know there are some of you that are on board with Roman Reigns winning his title on Raw. I understand your viewpoint. I get it. I just don't happen to agree with it. Personally, I think Roman Reigns winning the title on Raw in the fashion that he did was stupid. Plain and simple. I think it was absolutely stupid. And it epitomizes the WWE in so many ways. And now I'm going to explain to you why I think this move was as stupid as it was. Let's look at this first from a business standpoint. One of the major hooks you get every year for WrestleMania is what's going on with the world title match. And ultimately, with Roman Reigns, there will still be some type of hook revolving around him and the world title match, you would assume at this point in time. And more likely than not, it's going to revolve around him and God at WrestleMania for the title. You would think. You would think. Because that's where they're going. But usually the hook for WrestleMania and the world title match works best when it's either A, two like iconic figures battling it out for the title, or B, sometimes even more importantly, there's some type of big journey or story for somebody overcoming the odds and winning the title, and in particular winning their first world title. Well, now with Roman Reigns having won this belt on Raw, you've taken away that important hook for WrestleMania 32 at a time where you're trying to sell over 100,000 tickets for the event. That doesn't seem to be the most sensible to me. Think back two years ago with Daniel Bryan in the build-up to WrestleMania 30. Imagine if they just sit there and just the, the first Raw of 2014, they just have Daniel Bryan win the belt there. He just wins the belt right there. It takes away a significant portion of the appeal and the hook for WrestleMania 30. Because let's face it, one of the major hooks of appeal for WrestleMania 30 was, was Daniel Bryan going to be able to overcome the odds? Was he going to be able to reach the mountaintop? Was he going to fulfill his quest, his destiny? Oh, if he won the belt at the beginning of January, at the end of December of the previous year, then who cares? You've taken away that hook. And for Roman Reigns now, and the type of character that he is, and the way that you needed to put him over for what you're going to do with him going forward, You've taken away a potentially very important part of the arsenal heading into the biggest show of the year. And that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. It also sends a bad message in the sense of why watch the pay-per-view, why watch on the WWE Network, when you just tune back in the next night or Raw and see everything that you missed and actually get more. I understand the whole notion of title changes for the world title don't happen very often on Raw. And you need to have them every once in a while. And I'm in agreement with that. And when done right with the proper situation, I think it makes all the sense in the world. But this was not one of them. You just had Roman Reigns and Sheamus fight for the belt the night before, and he lost. Now come the next night, how stupid do you feel if you watched the pay-per-view, but you didn't have the chance to watch Raw, and you wanted to see Roman Reigns win the belt? Now Roman Reigns wins the belt, and you're not freaking watching. Or, if you didn't watch on the WWE Network, you didn't watch TLC, but then you did watch Raw and you see the Roman Reigns title change happen there, then it further justifies to you why you didn't bother with TLC to damn begin with. Why the hell watch it if they're just going to give it to you the next night for free any goddamn ways? The WWE already undercuts itself to, to a certain degree with the price point of the WWE Network with $9.99 a month. Now they've gone a step beyond that here with having a significant character like Roman Reigns do something important like winning the WWE World Heavyweight Championship the night after one of your big shows. So as a result, you're even further undercutting yourself by now undercutting the WWE Network by placing an emphasis on Raw. Why? All because you're in a panic about the freaking ratings. Well, doing a title change with a two-hour buildup within a Raw isn't going to do a lot long-term for the ratings any damn ways. All you're going to get is a one-week knee-jerk, reactionary, bump in the ratings, and this shit's going to go right back down again. And that's exactly what the fuck has happened. It's predictable, and it's patheticness. At the WWE, instead of doing something to give you good, sustainable, and entertaining television week in and week out, we'll sit there and let shit get to a point, and all of a sudden they have this come-to-Jesus meeting, and then one week they try to throw everything up against the wall, hope all that shit sticks, and well, what do you do after that? Who the fuck knows? It's one thing if they do this Raw title change and they have a few weeks to build up to it and it feels like it's a big important deal, but instead they just sat out there, here comes Vince McMahon, you get the nostalgia pop, it's two hours of build up, and bam, Roma's the champion. 
And what I don't know about Roman is, is he really the type of guy that can move enough merge to justify a spot at the top like that at this point? And have you really positioned yourself in a way where Roman Reigns can be that type of top merch mover that the WWE needs, covets, and values out of their world champions? And I'm just not sold that he's that type of guy yet. So from that business standpoint, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And most importantly of all, from a business standpoint, big wins almost always used to happen at big shows for a reason. And the reason being is because you maximize the payoff, you maximize the effect, and you maximize what you could do with that going forward. And it makes a statement, and it establishes guys. There's a reason, there's a reason the Macho Man won the world title for the first time at WrestleMania 4. Now, some of you will point to Hulk Hogan, but that Hulk Hogan uh, title change in 84 against the Irish Sheik was still seen by a lot of people. And that was a different time and a different period in the business. But Hulk Hogan still held the belt for almost a little over four freaking years. Macho Man won his first title at WrestleMania 4. When they did the whole thing with the two Hebners building up to WrestleMania 4, they had Hogan drop the belt to Andre. In front of 33 million people watching on TV, on the main event. That's a big fucking deal. The Ultimate Warrior, he won his first title at WrestleMania 6. Shawn Michaels won his first title at WrestleMania 12. There's a reason Austin won his first world title at WrestleMania 14. The Rock won his first world title at Survivor Series 98. John Cena and Dave Bautista won their first world titles at WrestleMania 21. Randy Orton won his first world title at SummerSlam 2004. There's a, Seth Rollins, for Christ's sakes, won his first world title at the end of WrestleMania 31. There's a reason that these guys traditionally win their first world titles at the biggest shows on the biggest stage because it matches the moment. Because it maximizes the impact. It maximizes the effect. Instead, what did the WWE do with Roman Reigns? They had him win the belt at Survivor Series to immediately drop it just so that way the next pay-per-view he didn't win it back just to give it back to him the next night of fucking Raw. I mean, think about how stupid that is. Where is the momentum for the character? Where is the positive effect for the character by having him win the title twice in this short of fashion in these type of manners? There is no payoff. Nothing good comes out of it. There's a reason it used to be done a certain way. There's a reason it should still be done a certain way. Again, as I referenced with Daniel Bryan, imagine how stupid things would feel for that whole journey to WrestleMania 30 if just on January 2nd or the 3rd, whenever that Raw was that year, the first one of the year, you just had him win the fucking belt there. Well, then what the hell's the point of doing anything with that belt in him at WrestleMania? So we get to the character aspect of this. Certain characters in particular need a proper build-up, a long story, a journey that leads to a big satisfying payoff. And Roman Reigns was the type of guy that you needed to have that journey, you needed to have that path. If you weren't going to smash him instantly, then you needed to slowly get there. You needed that proper build-up, you needed that proper story to build to that proper payoff. So of course the WWE gives us absolutely none of fucking that. They rushed the guy and rushed the change when the crowd is already divided. Do you think in any way, shape, or form that this is going to help unite the crowd behind Roman Reigns when you're sitting there rushing this shit and you're forcing this shit and you're not giving people any reason to get behind him? People don't think he needs their help. That's one of the fundamental things about professional wrestling. Is like when you look again, I'll keep bringing it back up. The Daniel Bryan situation, even the CM Punk situation, they had... Reasons to get behind these guys. And they felt like these guys needed their help. They needed them emotionally invested. There's no reason to get emotionally invested in Roman Reigns if he doesn't need the help because he's just going to overcome every fucking thing anyways. How in the fuck is this going to stop the crowd from being divided? If anything, you are going to unite them when it comes to Roman Reigns and unite them in a negative way where you've unintentionally, because of your stupidity and your ignorance, created another fucking incidental heel that doesn't draw any money as a face and doesn't get the type of heat that can make any money that way where people actually want to pay money to see him get his ass kicked. The point of what you were doing with Roman Reigns was to create a new star. Not a fucking Samoan Super Cena. 
And based off of what they're doing here, that's exactly what they're doing, is building a Samoan Super Cena. But not even a good version of it, because Christ Almighty, even John Cena won his first world title, where? At WrestleMania 21. We can't even rip off Cena right. Holy shit. And then storyline-wise. And as it comes to the stupidity of the whole authority angle and everything else, there's so many times they book themselves into stupid situations. If you don't like the people, don't fucking use them. If something is so concerning to you and such a big problem to you, then why would you even create the possibility that something bad could fucking happen? There's absolutely no logic or no sense for Vince giving Reigns a title match, agreeing to Sheamus saying, give him a title match, when Reigns had already lost. He had no rematch clause anymore. There was absolutely no reason to give him a fucking title match. From a purely kayfabe storyline standpoint, why in the fuck would Mr. McMahon give Roman Reigns a title match? That makes absolutely no fucking sense. And then on top of that, not only did it not make any fucking sense for him to give him a title match, we didn't even have the League of Nations run out and try to destroy Roman Reigns. You've got Vince McMahon out there. And that's it? Vince McMahon, of all people, Mr. McMahon, wouldn't do everything in his power imaginable to make sure that the result went the way that he wanted and he fucked with Roman Reigns and screwed him over so that way he could still fire his ass at the end of the fucking night? He wouldn't have the League of Nations run out. He wouldn't have the ref be corrupt. He wouldn't have the timekeeper be fucking corrupt. He wouldn't have the ring announcer be corrupt. This is Mr. McMahon, for Christ's sakes. And we don't even have the League of Nations run out. Now, they ran out... All of them, you know, they're all over the fucking place at the TLC match when here comes Raw and, and you don't get all of them. And it just, it's stupid to me. It's mind-blowing and it's ridiculousness. And what I don't understand even more so is why now all of a sudden does Vince McMahon freaking care? Because what's really going to be shitty from a storyline standpoint is the fact that this was like a one-off appearance for Vince and he's not going to consistently be involved. So why the fuck now would he give a shit about a son-in-law who a few years ago, remind you, storyline standpoint, removed Vince from power, years back, drugged his fucking daughter, had his way with her, he legally married her, but yeah, this was all some big... Oh, fucking A, don't even get me started. Why in the fuck would Vince give a shit now about what happened to Triple H? fuck would he care? And how in any way, shape, or form does this make for any type of good compelling storytelling or any type of good journey or path situation that people want to actually hop on board the Roman Reigns bandwagon? Again, it comes back to the character part. If you don't give people a reason to be invested in a character, they won't invest in him. And by having him win this match on an inconsequential random fucking Raw gives people more validation to not get behind Roman Reigns. Because instead of creating a new star again, you're creating a Samoan Super Cena and a poor knockoff ripoff at that. If you want to have Cena be the fucking champion so goddamn bad, then just have Cena be the fucking champion. Because nobody can be Cena like John Cena. That especially includes Roman Reigns. And furthermore, just from, again, a storyline standpoint, when we're talking about people getting involved and not getting involved, and when you have the shit with the League of Nations going on at TLC, the family are supposed to be such great friends of Roman Reigns' as you've got the Usos, you've got Dean Ambrose, and yet they're nowhere to be fucking found at TLC. And even with McMahon getting involved in this match Monday on Raw, the family is nowhere fucking bald found, nowhere to be involved, until the match is already over and decided, and then they come do the crappy, dusty finish where they're celebrating in the goddamn ring. We couldn't even get that part right. You know, it's one thing if you build up this heel faction here and this babyface faction here, you have these guys get involved, but these guys don't get involved, and then the next night, neither one of them get involved. It's just fucking stupid. You could tell it was, once again, clearly the brainchild of Vince, and that's what makes it as flawed and bad as it was. Because at the end of the day, where was the payoff to all of this? What does this really accomplish? This rushed the belt on Reigns before you needed to. This rushed the belt on Roman Reigns before you should have. You know, things used to be done a certain way for a reason. It was because it was the right way to do it. 
It was the best way to build up a potential new star. When you think back to how Bret Hart won the first his first title up in Canada at a freaking house show, you know, it took a while for him to find his footing as a world champion. But come WrestleMania 10, when he revisited it, and he had that classic with Owen Hart at the beginning of the night, and then he comes back and has a good main event against Yokozuna to close the show, you know, people were ready for the Bret Hart era. Granted, not as many people were watching back then, but you get the point. Shawn Michaels, the whole childhood dream has come true. You spent months building up to this match, this Iron Man match snoozer at WrestleMania 12. You know, Stone Cold Steve Austin, you're building up the tension between him and Mr. McMahon. And then you've got DX involved. There's this whole journey, this path that culminates at WrestleMania 14. Based off the way WWE runs shit today, none of this would ever freaking happen. I mean, for Christ's sakes, it's ridiculous. This company is so stupid now that even their golden boy, John Cena, if he was coming up now, they'd probably have him win the fucking belt on a SmackDown before the pay-per-view. You've got to have these big signature victories happen at your biggest shows of the year because it validates those shows and it validates those performers and it validates the stories and the culmination and gives a satisfying payoff of which we got none of this with what they did with Roman freaking Reigns. Again, Reigns' win in this fashion, in my opinion, helps to further sabotage the character, lumps him up into the Cena category, and he's not even a good Cena at that. He's like the love child of Test and Diesel without the charisma. And now you've taken away a major, compelling, interesting hook for WrestleMania. It's just not the same now that Roman Reigns has already won his championship. It's just not, and that's fucking ridiculous that this company would sabotage such an important show that they're looking to make such a big deal out of. Why would you do that? You got a bullshit buildup and absolutely no real major payoff whatsoever. This guy has been around three plus years now. We've gotten to the point where when he wins the world title, it should feel good. It should mean something. And instead, it means Nothing. And at the end of the day, most people aren't moved by it and they don't fucking care. And at the end of the day, this title change, just like so many things this company does, reflects the short-sightedness and the knee-jerk philosophy of this PG brand of WWE. Doing this type of bullshit is not going to positively affect your ratings in any type of long-term sense. Booking week-to-week -week like this company does doesn't even create good week-to-week -week television, you know, let alone good extended television over a period of time that would increase viewership, increase interest in the product. You know, it's bad enough if you're not sitting there knee-jerking with all the part-timers. Now you're knee-jerking in terms of the major important decisions that you make involving your most important title that you have, a prop that you use to draw a lot of money, or you should. But of course, this company finds a way to screw this up too. You had the, the whole thing perfectly set up for WrestleMania. Hell, you didn't even have to go with Roman Reigns winning the belt at WrestleMania. That shit could have even waited until SummerSlam and it still works. Similar to Brock Lesnar winning his first title against The Rock at SummerSlam 2002. Instead, you gave this away against Sheamus of all fucking people. I'm the Raw after TLC. The hell is wrong with this company? This title win was fucking stupid because this company is fucking stupid.